Hey everybody, Adam Guthrie here from I Feel Good magazine and I'm super excited to introduce to you this amazing lady who's been whole food plant based for as long as I have. <laughs> Her name's Emma Roach and she has a certificate in plant based nutrition. She's got a website called plant plant.com and she also has a book that is got an incredible title it's whole food plant based on five dollars a day so what a great title because you know it shows you that you don't have to spend a lot of money to actually live and eat a whole food plant based diet and become super healthy so emma thanks for coming and spending a bit of time with me and having a chat how are you i'm very well thank you adam thanks for having me as well no it's my pleasure so where are you right now in the world I uh, I live in Belgium at the moment, so I'm originally from Canberra, and I've been living overseas for close to ten years now. Actually, I spent some time in the UK, and then I was back in Australia, and then I've been in Belgium for a little while. Okay, so what what made you head over to the to the UK and to Belgium? Why did you leave the land of amazingness, <laughs> sunshine? Um, well, originally, just for the experience, and then later for love. Ah, okay. So the love. So you met your partner over there? I met my partner in Australia, but he was <laughs> Yeah, travel sort of does that, doesn't it? You know, I met my wife in the UK. I went backpacking when I was 21, met this beautiful, gorgeous English girl. <laughs> <laughs> we then come to the sunshine, so we ended up back in Australia. Yeah. Yeah, so what's, what's it like living in Belgium, you know, it's, um, especially from a plant-based point of view? It is a bit different and it definitely was lagging, I'd, I'd say lagging quite a bit behind Australia and the UK at one point, but I think in the last couple of years the, the whole plant-based movement and veganism has gained so much traction and so, so now it's, it's really taken off. But in the beginning it was difficult. In the beginning when I moved here, you know, there wasn't a lot going on you know, unless you were cooking at home by yourself, there wasn't a lot of options in terms of restaurants. There wasn't a lot of people who really understood um, maybe even what, what vegan meant. Um, so it's really, really great to see how much things have changed over the last five or six years. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it is growing, isn't it, around the world. It's amazing. I'm so excited because, like, when you and I first started eating this way, it was a lot more difficult you really have to cook at home or know exactly what to ask for at a restaurant <laughs> i'm yep. going to get it for sure so you went whole food plant-based why like you've been eating this way for how long now i i stopped eating meat when i was 13 so that would have been uh almost 18 years ago now yeah. and then a few years after that i decided to make the switch to being vegan um purely out of interest. I'd, I'd never really given it much thought and had one conversation with somebody who ate that way and thought I'd give it a go and it just stuck. Um, and then it was around 2010 when my interest in the health aspects of eating plant-based was starting to grow. I'd always been really um, motivated by the ethical, you know, the ethical mm -hmm. reasons behind it. And my husband brought the book, The China Study, to my attention. Um, and he said, you know, it seems like something you'd be really interested in. You should get this book and read it. Apparently it's, you know, it's got a lot of really groundbreaking information. So I ordered it and read it and that's basically where it started. Wow. That book is responsible for so many people. <laughs> the whole yeah. thing based. That was mine as well. You know, after I had the heart attack in that month after when I'm recovering at home, someone gave me that book. And I, like you, I was vegetarian. I was like vegetarian since 21. And at 39, I had the heart attack. Just eating yeah. dairy. I didn't eat any meat. Yep. I didn't eat any um, eggs. I just ate dairy and processed food and vegetables. But that was enough to cause a heart attack and put you know, 30 kilos on me. <laughs> like, one to yep. 10 kilos. So it's interesting. It's just not meat, but it's really important that, you know, the dairy as well. And that's what that book you know, exposed to me, Adam, well, maybe it's all this dairy you've been eating and these processed foods that have caused this illness. And, you know, yeah. I switched it to a whole food plant-based diet. So you went vegetarian when you were young just from an ethical point of view. Basically, yeah. It was, again, it was, 
I think a lot of kids maybe are on some level aware that that they don't really want to be eating animals. A lot of kids, you know, they love animals and they, they don't want anything to do to hurt them. But you don't, sometimes you don't make that connection. And so it took someone sort of just bringing it to my attention a little bit, the fact that I'd met a couple of other people that were vegetarians sort of just made me think about it for the first time. And I I decided that it, that it wasn't for me and I gave it a go. And I gave up after four days, actually. <laughs> and then next day I, I went back and, and that was... And you so stay forever. An eighteen-year effort. Yeah, it's interesting when you're young. Like I grew up on a, a few acres, and we had cows and and everything. And I, my parents bought me a air rifle when I was about ten. And I remember sitting on our hill, and there was a fence, and I picked up this gun, and I went, and had this little bird on the fence, and I shot it, and it fell <laughs> to the ground. And I remember just bursting into tears, thinking to myself. That little bird could have been 10 like me and had this whole life to live. And I just took it away. But yep, that's exactly right. What made you go whole food, plant-based, become a whole food, plant-based vegan? What was the catalyst for that? It's hard to say, really. I just, it was, I, I sort of, as I got older, you know, I went through a phase of some pretty serious junk food veganism. Just everything that was vegan, I wanted to try it, you know. And I still, I still have that. On occasion, yeah, but um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I always had a, a bit of an interest in health. I, I was always interested in, in health and longevity, and I noticed that when I ate more natural foods, that I just felt better. That you know, my skin was clearer, my digestion was better. Um, I had more energy to do things, and for me, I spent a lot of years working in hospitality, so very long days on your feet, and it was important for me to be feeling good. Um, but then also in my mid-teens, I found out that I had um, an ongoing problem with my kidneys. And in addition to avoiding animal, pro like animal protein, one of the things that was recommended was to minimise salt intake and to reduce consumption of highly processed foods. So that's kind of what really motivated me to, you know, look for healthy ways of eating. And I went through a bunch of different things like, raw foods and avoiding gluten and all that kind of stuff. And then when I read the China study and started getting into the more scientifically supported evidence, the whole food plant-based diet was kind of what I was already doing, but it just solidified to me that I was on the right path to doing what was best for my health. So, yeah. That's what made it. So did you find any challenges or struggles when you even being vegetarian already but switching to the whole food? What? Yes. What are your struggles? I think the biggest struggle in the beginning is, is you've got to give your time, your taste buds some time to adapt. Mm. So even if you think that you're eating very healthy, the second that you totally cut out all the oil and you really, really try to minimise the salt and sugar intake, it can seem a little bit bland and you've kind of got to come up with more creative ways to flavour your food. I've always cooked with herbs and spices, but you really have to, you know, rethink things a little, get vinegars and citrus fruits and all these kinds of things that you can, you know, learn to cook with. Um, so it was trial and error and there were some things that I cooked that were pretty bad and some <laughs> things like were great and, um, and you, you just had to give that time. But the other thing, of course, and something I still find a really big challenge to this day is, uh, is social occasions. Okay. You still because find that a challenge now. I, I, I don't, I know what to do. I know how to navigate them. It's fine. Yeah. But uh, when you're dining out, you know, vegan options are there, but the whole food plant-based options are a little bit more difficult to sort of, to sort of get around. Um, and you don't want to end up feeling like you're missing out by eating whole food plant-based. And I think that that's one of the biggest obstacles for people in the beginning. Um, so that was a bit of a learning curve as well, you know, figuring out what to do and, and how to plan for, situations where I was eating out or eating at people's houses, that sort of thing. So what did you do? What, what are your tips to us, anyone listening to this and watching this, if you've de they decided to go whole food plant-based or they've been doing it a little while and they've been able to do it successfully at home, but what happens, you know, when you go, you, someone rings you and says, come over for dinner, you know, how do you approach that? Or you go to a barbecue or you, you know, going out to a restaurant. What do you, what do, you do these days to help you still get 
I try to plan as much as possible. Yeah. So if you sort of have any kind of say in where you're going, if you're going out to a restaurant, I kind of have a handful of restaurants that I know can can cater pretty well to my, you know, to my way of eating. And so I'll often suggest a venue and see if it's possible. If it's predetermined, I'll usually look up the menu and see, oh, yeah, maybe I can, um, you know, maybe I can work around this, see what's available. You can even call the restaurant and you can say that you have dietary needs, especially if um, if you are trying to address a health problem. Say, for example, you, Adam, if you've had heart disease and you've had a heart attack, it's it's really serious and it's something that you have to take seriously. So don't be afraid to, you know, to ask for what you need and be polite about it and be considerate about it. And quite often, you know, people are pretty happy to accommodate you. And if it's a social situation where you're going to somebody's house, you know, you can offer to bring something. You can, you know, you can sort of, you know, make a whole meal for other people to share and you can help show people that this way of eating is, is you know, it's really interesting and fun and can be really delicious. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, yeah, I do the same thing. You know, if I'm going to a restaurant, I'll ring a day or two in advance and say, can you please make me a vegan with no oil, a vegan meal with no oil? And I get that. <laughs> Sometimes I get amazing things. Sometimes I just get, you know, you know some potatoes, vegetables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't mind that because you mentioned, you know, citrus. Mate, citrus on steamed vegetables. Everything. <laughs> That's right. It makes things And you learn to adapt. You learn to adapt. That's exactly right. And as you, as you were saying also about travel, yep. now you have Airbnb. You can book places where you can self-cater and you can go to the supermarket you can buy things you know there's all kinds of options and it's just it just comes down to planning i really think that's yeah. that's what it's all about that's right because at the end of the day there's fresh whole plants in every country in the world maybe not the just about okay and you know i'm traveling at the moment and i'm in my car okay I mean, I stay in places. I'm at my sister's house right now in Griffith. And, um, but I've been on the road and I've got my car and most nights I'll sleep in the back of my car. Like when I was 21 years old, I got my surfboard. Yep. Next <laughs> and what I've done is just, just got one of those little butane gas burners and I've got a wok and a wooden spoon. And that's, that's it. That's great. That's all you need. Then you just go to a farmer's market. You can go to a supermarket. You just buy fresh produce, come... I can, in that wok, I can make a casserole, I can make a curry, I can make a stir fry, I can make a soup, I can even make burgers because I bought one of those flat bottom woks so I can actually yeah. put the patties in the flat on the, on the base. And I can live off the road whole food plant-based. That's just- great. I like, I like the challenge of it as well. It's, it's part of the fun of it, I think, is the creativity of having to come up with different ways to do things and, and discover things. And, yeah, it's kind of exciting, I think. It's super exciting. I love it. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So, um, what, you know, you went whole food plant-based and then, you know, it's interesting because you and I have both done the T, um, Colin Campbell, E. Cornell plant-based nutrition course, which is an awesome course. And it turns out you and I are in the same year, in the same class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, <Well. laughs> which is so bizarre. It was like one of the first classes. So. Yeah. Um, how did you find that experience and why did you end up doing that class? I was sort of in a, like, I was sort of in an in-between phase. I I recently moved overseas again uh, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, where I wanted to put my time. And I'd I'd read the China study and the book, uh, the documentary Forks Over Knives had come out the year before and that was also really exciting and that was sort of inspiring a lot of people and I was just ordering more books and trying to trying to get all the information that I could in thinking, you know, really great to sort of expand your knowledge and be able to maybe use this to help other people, you know, to eat better, whether it's just your friends and family or whether you want to maybe spread the message a little bit wider. And I just thought that the course would be something really good to to give me that extra bit of knowledge and information that I could use to help other people uh, and also to help, help myself, you know, because I'm not, I don't have a scientific background. So it's really good for me to uh, understand that side of things a little bit more and sort of give myself a little bit more um, confidence to 
share my experience and what I've learned with other people in, in order to help them as well. Yeah, okay. So um, I'll be able to share it. That's, that's the reason why I joined too. What did you start after doing the course? I started my website after I did the oh, yeah. course. So I started, yeah, I started Plant Plate the year after I took the course. So that was kind of one of the building blocks on my way to doing that. And like you said, you know, it, it doesn't put you in a position to diagnose or treat people, but um, sharing the kind of practical knowledge, the cooking and the, you know, and the ways to navigate eating a whole food plant-based diet day to day sort of gives you a little bit more uh, background information to build on that. And so, yeah, I think about six, six or seven months after that, I got into making the website yeah. and putting together articles and recipes. And so that was, that was the beginning of that for me. So that was great. Yeah. And then what happened? It's a long time ago now. <laughs> I can't yeah. remember. Think about it. was about 2013. Like a lot of people with that website. I hope so. Yeah. I like, I, it was, it was good. It was, um, I like, Really, really happy with how it went, and I think I think you and I maybe are are proof of the fact that most people who come to this way of eating are most excited about passing the information along That's and true. figuring out ways that they can share this with the highest uh, you know amount of people to get that information there. And that was it for me. And fortunately, I had the support of this amazing community in Australia, uh, the Whole Food Plant Based Aussies Facebook group, which was founded by a couple of women who similar experience you know read the china study and saw forks over knives and, and wanted to build a community around whole food plant-based eating um so being a part of that really helped the website to to flourish and hopefully reach you know i think it reached even more people as a result of that community so that was really great that's an amazing community. you know yes. i'm there as well it's a great you know there's so many people in there now it's like 13,000 or something, so many. It's crazy how fast it's grown and it's it's a real, yeah, it's a real testament to to the movement but also to the people who, who put the time and energy into yeah, to making it a great resource, yeah. yeah. And then you decided to write a book, huh? Yes, I did. <laughs> so tell me, how did your book come about? Because it's an amazing book. I love your title because it doesn't you know, cost a lot to eat this way. Tell us a bit about it. How did it start? No, exactly. It, it was always kind of intended to be a focus point of the website because I, so I switched to a vegan diet when I was about 16 and I started eating whole food plant-based when, I've got to figure this out now, in my early 20s. So I was always living on a budget. As long as I had been plant-based, I was not working with a lot of, uh, a very big income for, for groceries. Uh, and I'd always made it work, even even at points where I was traveling and saving and had very, very minimal income. I found ways to, you know, to make it work for me, buying things in bulk and buying beans and grains and frozen vegetables. And when I started the website, it was one of the things I heard from people about the most. You know, people would write and they would say, I really want to eat this way, I really want to do this for my health, but I really can't afford to do it. And I started to think, well, what is it like? Why do people why do people think that this way of eating is so expensive? I'm here, I do my groceries for me and my husband for, you know, 50 euros. And what, and was that kids, uh, a, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> about, about 70 or 80 dollars. Yeah. And I, I think in Australia it would, would probably be something around 90, 90 to 100 maybe. But um but yeah, and, and so I thought that it's you know it's week after week of the same the same thing and people get a very they get a lot of different messages and so they think that in order to eat healthy that they they have to buy uh everything organically and they have to get it from these supermarkets and that they've got to you know include these powdered magical superfoods that cost fifty dollars a bucket and all of these sorts of different different messages that they're getting and and when you break it down and simplify it for people and say you know these these really basic staple foods that you can get really cheaply are really healthy and if you base your entire diet around them you're going to see health improvements and once you give people that message then you kind of open it up for them and that that was the point of the book was to say really specifically look here is how you can do it here's how you can do it on a really low budget and um, give people the tools necessary to make the change and to do it affordably yeah i think it's a super important message it's a great book because a lot of people do get 
that confused. I come along across a lot of people say, oh, you know, but it's so expensive to eat this way. And it's like you, you know, they think they have to get all the superfood and the organics. That's the excuse I get from people. So I'm pleased you've got a book that, that um, you know, helps them get rid of that belief. <laughs> so what, you know, if, what is a whole food plant-based diet? You know, you and I know what one is, but for those that have just come across this interview, you know, well, what is this? What's it, what is it from your perspective? Uh, if I wanted to break it down as simply as possible, I kind of see it as, as four main groups. And you're looking at fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes, and then, you know, adding in things for a little bit of flavour, like small amounts of nuts and seeds and herbs and spices. But at, at a very, very basic level, you're basing your diet around those, those four food groups. No animal products of any kind, so meat, dairy, fish, uh, avoiding highly processed foods, avoiding oils and high levels of salt and sugar in the diet. Yeah. But why no oil? Emma, why no oil? Why, <laughs> why no oil? It's so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, and, and a lot of people have the same experience as you. It's really the last thing to click in their head and, a um, couple of reasons. I mean, if you're looking at it from a health perspective, uh, a lot of studies have shown that the inclusion of oil is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a processed food. It's the fat taken out of the food. It's the fat taken out of the olive. It's the fat taken out of the sunflower. It's the fat taken out of, you know, the avocado, whatever, you know. And when fats are present in a whole food, you know, it comes with a whole bunch of other things to help you to, to break it down and utilise it in a more, you know, wholesome way. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, an oil, is, it's a pure fat. And so when you're adding it to your food, you're adding fat to your food, you're increasing the percentage of calories in your diet that come from fat. And a lot of the evidence from people like uh, Dr. Colin Campbell and Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. McDougall show that, you know, a diet that is more than sort of 10 to 15% of the calories from fat contributes greatly to the development of diseases and particularly heart disease so true definitely it's the thing it's like you know like you said nature packages food in its perfect form you know with the fat and the fiber and all the macro and micronutrients and vitamins and minerals and when they're all combined and we eat it like in that form our bodies know what to do with it it simulates it super easy but when they're isolated that was a much better explanation than I did a bit earlier over here. But that's exactly it. And it's interesting that people can see that perspective when it comes to sugar. Yes. When you have sugar packaged in fruit with the fiber and the nutrients and, and most people understand that it's part of a whole package and that it's good for you. But when you isolate it and you create refined sugar and processed sugar, the effect it has on your body and the way your body processes it is different. And it's really no different with oil. Yet, for some reason, the way people are perceiving it these days is entirely different. Yeah, totally. I think, like Esselstyn says, there's no olive press hanging off an olive tree in nature. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> but, yeah, that's super cool. So you decided to make this book and make it cheap. Now, it's true. Like, I've, I've got a program that I teach people how to eat this way. And there's some ladies in our group that they and their husbands eat this way, like you, for 60 to 50 to 60 Australian dollars a week. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Right. So legumes, yeah. not cheap are legumes. So beans, you buy them in bulk. You bring them home. You soak them. You know, you cook them in and a freezer. Then you freeze them. Then you freeze them. Yep. So does your book teach everyone how to do that, like how to buy the food in bulk and is that how you get it to the five bucks? Yeah, so so the book is sort of designed to be a whole guide from from the planning and shopping process all the way through to the cooking and storing process. So in the introductory section, there's a lot of tips for people on how they can actually shop to save money, how they can shop to maximise their budget. Yeah. There is information on how to soak and cook legumes because that's a pretty fundamental part of it. Yep. There's uh, information on how to cook grains. There's information on how to store them, to freeze them, to refrigerate them. Uh, and then there's a breakdown, the shopping list, and a whole a whole guide through. So it's got it broken down into price. It's got it broken down into where you should buy, what to sort of get the best price on it. Um, and, yeah, yeah, basically from, from A to Z, everything that you need wow. to, to eat that way on the budget. 
What a great resource. So five bucks a day. Give me a breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> Why don't we guess the five bucks? <laughs> um, having a think, the, the first week, the main breakfast is a cinnamon crunch granola. So oh. it's, uh, yeah. I've the heard toast- about that granola. <laughs> so many people talk about it. <laughs> Emma's Pretty granola. Good. I'm going to have to <laughs> it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a definite favourite in my house. I cook it a lot. So it's a toasted muesli with some sultanas and some sunflower seeds and some maybe applesauce. Uh, really easy and it keeps for the whole week. So you kind of, you know, one of the breakfast options is that topped with some thawed frozen berries and some plant milk. Um, and it's really filling, you know, oats are loaded with fibre and it's got, you know, a lot of other good crunchy stuff in there. So you're chewing, chewing, chewing. So it keeps you nice and full. Um, lunch is often leftovers from dinner the night before because it was one of the other obstacles people faced was the amount of time they had to spend cooking. And if you're really used to eating out a lot, if you're used to buying convenience foods, the transition to whole food plant-based can be made more difficult by having to adapt to, you know, the amount of time spent in the kitchen. So I was thinking of ways that I could help make that easier for people and cooking extra dinner and portioning out some of that for lunches the next day was one of the ways I did that. So, you know, lunches could be anything, could be um, there's a spring cold floor so it's got shredded cabbage and carrots and chickpeas and a vinaigrette and fresh dill you've got leftovers like curries and lentil bolognese and uh it's been a while since i <laughs> since i cooked everything from the book fresh salsa and corn all these different things different cuisines different you know well that's the thing you know i like the idea because that's what i teach as well is you know the leftovers for lunch because if you make big pots and batches of it it saves a lot of time in the kitchen because let's face it, most of us are super busy these days. Yep, and exactly right. If you have one less um, meal in the kitchen, I'm all for that for sure. Yeah, so a couple, of them, a couple of them are things that you actually make six to eight portions of. So you've got like a veggie chilli with, with cornbread and, you know, you cook it up and freeze half of it for later in the week. So on Sunday night, you don't have to cook, take it out of the freezer, dinner's ready to go. Um, so that's all kind of planned in there, people people, and how busy they are as well. So guys, if you're wanting to transition this way or even if you've already transitioned this way and you want to eat more cheaply, grab Emma's book <laughs> because it sounds like it's awesome. Um, so what other things have happened to you? Because since that program, you've written your book, you're a big contributor to whole food plant-based Aussies, but other things have opened up for you as well in regards to the plant-based community in the US and around the world, haven't they? haven't they, where you contribute and help and educate people? Yeah, I've done a few things. I, I um, Yeah, I've done a few workshops over here. I don't know if you know uh, Helene. Yeah. Uh, yeah, from, from Adelaide. Yeah. Her and her husband, Alphonse, they came over a few years ago and they ran a series of workshops here in the Netherlands and Belgium, which I was really fortunate to be a part of. Um, she's wonderful. She's beautiful. I love her. Oh, she's great. They're both great. They're both fantastic. I had an amazing time. They actually had a turnout of over 100 people at the, at the seminar that I was present for in Holland, which was amazing. And it was, it was fantastic to hear, uh, to hear them talk uh, and share, share their knowledge. And it was fantastic to see people who might never have uh, been exposed to this idea of whole food plant-based eating there. Um, so that was, for me, that was really memorable experience from the last few years um i tried to do the cooking demonstrations no we just did um um it was just a talk actually and it was all catered for so we had other people (laughs) um yeah so i i discussed the you know the approach the practical approach to eating this way and doing it on a budget and helene and alphonse they talked more about the uh you know the science and the reasoning and and, Mm. um and all of the the really important knowledge. Yeah, well, they're doctors. Yeah. And, uh, they're doctors. They know more <laughs> about that than I do, so I, I did my bit and <laughs> it was really great question, yeah. And what about um, McDougal? You do work with some things with McDougal? John McDougal? I do. I actually um, am the McDougal's resident food photographer. Are you? <laughs> yes, I am. So I'm actually on their team of staff. Um, 
And, yeah, so they email me once in a while with recipes. They have this huge, huge database of recipes because, of course, he and his wife, Mary, have been doing this for decades. And so they have built up a serious arsenal of, of, of recipes. Uh, and, yeah, so they email me once in a while with a list of things they'd really like to have photographed for their newsletters and for their programs. And I take the photos of them and... I send them back to them and they use them and I get to test and cook and eat the delicious recipes that they have. And it's really, it's really fantastic to be able to be a part of something even, even from the other side of the world and, um, and to be involved in that. How amazing is being able to work in the world now from anywhere? You know, a lot more people, it's opening up just with being online, right? Like, That's right. Literally, I work from anywhere. It's incredible. And, it's, and it's, really, it's really helping people have a sense of community that they may not otherwise have because, of course, it's unlikely that you're going to find tens or hundreds of people in your local community that are, that are interested or, you know, eating this way. Uh, and so it helps people to feel like they're normal. <laughs> and what they're doing is, 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 uh, is, okay. is something that, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, totally. I um, I get that, and we've got that inside our program as well. We've got people all over the world, and you know, we've got two people in Darwin, <laughs> and yeah. on their own, you know, they were trying to do this, and and as soon as you come into a community, whether it's like whole food plant based Aussies, and there's heaps of them out there. When you get into those sort of communities where everyone's on the same journey, people have been there before you, people are just starting. It just becomes a tribe that you can tap into every day when the rest of the world is like saying you're not doing the right thing for your health, right? You have to eat meat to get the protein. You have to drink cow's milk to get calcium. You're going to get super sick. Well, actually, I was super sick and now I'm super healthy because I got rid of those. And they need, when you have these communities online, it gives people the confidence and, you know, raises their belief system that they're doing the right thing and if they continue with it, they're going to get healthy. That's exactly right. And social pressure can really uh, push people off the right path. If you don't feel like what you're doing is, 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 uh, is normal or, or you have people telling you that, that what you're doing is wrong or you don't have support from anybody around you, it's much easier to sort of say, oh, it's too, it's too different or it's too difficult. And uh, that, that kind of helps people really push on with what they're doing and say, no, you know, this is exactly what's right for my health. And it's, it's also just this constant flow of, of information, you know, of, of, um, of knowledge and experience and, and, and new research and all these kinds of things, keeping people up to date and helping people through difficult situations. And, and it's great that, that people, that I think people in this community are really dedicated to, to doing that, to helping other people, and that's what I really like about it as well. Mm. I'm interested in your <laughs> I'm, I'm no pro, but I did develop, you know, I did develop um, some some good basic skills while I was doing the books because I did the photos. Yeah, it looks so awesome. Hey, tell, yeah, us, you. tell us your tips. What sort of camera do you use? What sort of light do you use? I use one of the cheapest digital SLR cameras on the market. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's about seven or eight years old. I think we bought it shortly after we started the website, Cindycon. Uh, it does the job and we bought a different uh, lens for it. We bought a macro lens um, for the food photography, bought it secondhand, yep. save money, uh, yep. and it does the job. I always use natural light. Mm-hmm. Um, just as easier for me being somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of experience in, in that area. And I live in an apartment that fortunately gets the sun at one end from, um, so from morning till night. So I open my doors to my deck and I set the food up there. And it's filtered, filtered natural light comes in and I find that's, that's best for the kind of food. But do you filter it? Do you use that a screen on the window? Or no, the it's, um, it's Belgium. It's ah, always over. Okay. You've got clouds. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> always clouds. So I can basically only do food photography from May until October. Okay. Then it's, then it's raining. So. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Food photography... Did you do any courses on it or did you just Google it and YouTube it? Did a lot of reading and I, and I uh, did a lot of, asked a lot of questions to my friends who studied photography in, um, yeah. in university. One of these. 
Ah, yeah. They shoot everything on an iPhone. That's amazing. Everything. Even for Eatwell, and we've had covers on Eatwell magazine with an iPhone. There's a lot you can do with it nowadays. It's much more, it's, it's, it's way more advanced and much more accessible, yeah. Totally. It's so easy and it's all about the light and it's 100% natural light, you know, and it's incredible, you know. And you yeah, it's sh- interesting we had the same kind of learning curve because it was the same for me. We bought, we bought these lights and we bought these boxes and we bought the did It just didn't work. So it's, we kind of came around the same. Yeah. The same. Although I've not quite progressed to, to doing it on my phone yet. <laughs> well, no, maybe one day. Yeah, next time you'll be amazed it's interesting that our paths and our journey have been very similar very yep amazing so where are you now and where's where you headed what's your plan for the um plant-based world and you know the, and your contribution to it the books are out that's really the the biggest accomplishment for me and that was the main thing I wanted to do was to help show people how to eat this way affordably. So the fact that I, that I put the books out, I put them out as e-books and then we were able to publish one, uh, I feel like they're there now and they're always going to be accessible to people. So um, for the time being, I've taken a little bit of a break um, to focus more on work and family and also because, um, you know, it, it, there's so much information out there now, um, so much available that maybe wasn't available to people five or six years ago. Um, I don't feel as urgent a need to uh, to get stuff out because I feel like there's plenty of amazing resources out there for people. Um, but I do have I do have a lot of plans long term for other uh, books. Yeah. For other guides that I feel could help make the whole transition and journey easier for people. So I've got uh, plans at the moment, which I've had for quite some time that I haven't been able to develop for a batch cooking book. So I've been testing recipes for that for the past uh, five or six months, uh, something people are really interested in, again, to save time and reduce the amount of time they spend in the kitchen. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a work in progress and it's probably going to take a bit longer than my other books, but uh, I think it will definitely, it will definitely get there. Yep. Um, and beyond that, just kind of just kind of see what happens and see see where things go, and um, you know, keep learning and keep gathering new information and keep sharing what I can with uh, with people I know. I find it, it's really um, uh, sharing this kind of stuff with your friends and family and seeing people that you know improve their health and and um, and overcome, you know, health problems is probably to me being the biggest and most rewarding thing. So I'm continually doing that. I, you know, I always get, I always get um, requests and, and emails from friends and family asking asking for bits and pieces of information, recipes, and so as long as I can keep doing that as well, then then I'm happy. Yeah. Have Have you had people in your family that have been ill and improved their health starting to eat this way? Um, nothing, nothing particularly, you know, huge, but, but small, lots of, lots of people, lots of small things. A lot of people with high cholesterol, uh, friends, some close family friends and a couple of family members really able to, to bring their cholesterol down, uh, bring their blood pressure down, address prediabetes. Um, so basically preventing things from, from becoming, becoming huge, you know, basically addressing the issues before they become major issues and and even yeah even those small feats to me are, are huge that they're, they're amazing so has anyone emailed you from your group saying that you know i had you know i've had a heart attack or i've had type 2 diabetes i've been eating your food and i have so yeah that's... yeah a couple of people um i actually i had a i had an email from somebody a couple of months ago who'd had their gallbladder removed and actually was recommended by their doctor and surgeon to try a vegan diet and got on to the book and, um, yeah, reduced cholesterol, reduced blood pressure, um, off medications, lost 30, 35 kilos, feeling fantastic, going to the park with their kids, running. It, it's mind-blowing because, you know, I, I've, I've never been in that that kind of health situation for me, it was more about um, maintaining my health. But when people really write to you and and tell you those things, and and to feel like you're a part of, of changing 
the outcome of of their life in terms of their health is it's it's amazing. So I've had yeah I've had a few a few people you know who've had heart attacks and people who you know were on a lot of medication for for diabetes or for blood pressure um, to be able to reduce or come off that to be able to you know regain their life. It's totally it's amazing. and that's it is that's what I love about it. I love. I love to see people change their life. Like it really does, you know. Yes, it's a whole package. Everything, everything changes. It's, it's, it's not just going to address the one particular issue that you have. It's a, everything else is going to be a side effect of, of, you, of you eating this way. And it's, yes. it's, it's fantastic. And it's so rewarding to yep. get that feedback. That's what it is. It's, it's sharing your experience and, and, and sharing what you've learned and, and you know, the mistakes that you've made that you've learned from that you can help other people to avoid and and I think it's going to have a domino effect it has a flow on effect those people who've learned that from you are going to pass that on to to their friends and family and so on and so on and that's that's what's helping to get that that whole message out and broaden the, the community and help it reach more people it's it's success stories you know well it's successful <laughs> it's, you know books like yours you're doing the same thing for people I'm sure there's hundreds and hundreds of people out there that have not emailed you but have bought your book even that their life has been transformed from it. You and I have been in this position to be able to share this information on a practical level because, you know, there's a lot of science out there and there's a lot of people talking about the science, but you know as well as I do, <laughs> until we put it in the mouth, nothing changes. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. And there are definitely people who, who are uh, better equipped to share yeah, totally. the scientific knowledge and yeah. then there's people like us who are there to, uh, to share the practical knowledge. So it's good to have that combination. Yeah. Who do you go to for the scientific knowledge? Um, well, like a lot of people, uh, Nutrition Facts is for me a really fantastic website. It's, you know, it's it's direct, it's snippets, it's videos. It's he's gathered. Dr. Michael Greger gathers all the information and, and puts it into really succinct uh, videos that everybody can access and understand. Um, I, you know, I just keep up to date. I'm, I'm signed up to newsletters for most of the plant-based doctors. So I get newsletters from the T. Colin Campbell Foundation. I get newsletters from the doctors who work at True North. Um, I get newsletters from Dr. McDougall. You know, I follow all the, yeah. all the different doctors on, uh, on Facebook. So I'm kind of always getting news and updates about new research and new articles and and it's just this constant flow of information. So it's yeah, fantastic. And, you know, there's more and more studies coming out which reinforce, you know, the evidence that this is a very powerful way to eat. Exactly right. And that's another important important point. And I think going back to what I was saying before about people getting a lot of too much information and a lot of misinformation is that, you know, a study will come out that says, oh, well, eating lots of fat is, is really good for you. Or a study comes out that says, eating no carbohydrates is really good for you, but there are these isolated studies in a huge body of scientific evidence and the overwhelming, you know, majority of the scientific evidence continues to point towards a whole food plant-based diet being the most beneficial way of eating for human health. So, you know. Yeah, I totally agree. Back to food. This is back to you. Food, what do you eat? What's your day look like? What is your favourite meals? I, I eat a lot. <laughs> I'm, on my feet, I'm on my feet the majority of the day and I usually get up at about four in the morning. Yep. So I have quite a long day. So I actually start my day now with a smoothie. I didn't, I didn't have smoothies for a long time, but I've got to pack in a lot into a short period of time um, because of my job. So I've got to get the calories in. So I usually make a smoothie with some berries and mango and spinach. Uh, to start my day out and then I have a second breakfast of uh, oats I eat oats every day so every day oats with flax uh, dates and berries with a little bit of plant milk um, lunches you know leftovers always leftovers for me so it's quite often something like uh, wholemeal pasta with a veggie sauce really simple stuff baked potatoes and, and salad um, uh, stir fry vegetable stir fry with some tofu and brown rice and then we just have a rotation of similar things for dinner. So a lot of a lot of uh, starch. I'm a big starch eater. I'm a big I'm a big McDougal fan. So a lot of potatoes, a lot of brown rice, a lot of sweet potatoes, a lot of wholemeal pasta, 
Um, and because I have, you know, a husband and a stepson, I, I try to cook things that are, you know, comfort, a lot of comfort foods, a lot of things yeah. that really appeal to them. Especially if you're in a cold climate. Yeah, I, I love the starches too. And I, I'm a massive fan on leafy greens, you know. I teach you oh, yeah. four cups of leafy greens a day, at least cooked or raw. Very, very important thing that I forgot to mention. I put, yeah, I put them in my smoothie in the morning. Yep. And then almost every lunch goes just on a bed of leafy greens. So, you know, kale or spinach or something, rock it on the bottom and then pile the dinner on top and then yep. they're in ready for the next day and then there's always more in the meal as well but it's it's great to be getting it as much as you possibly can yeah so why are the leafy greens important so many reasons you know uh number one being the minerals that they provide so getting a variety of leafy greens you're going to get calcium you're going to get iron you're going to get magnesium you're going to get all of these things that people will tell you that you can't get on a plant-based diet which you can <laughs> um another Another and another reason to eat the leafy greens, of course, is um, is the effect that they have on your, your vascular system. So chewing the leafy greens and the release that they uh, that, sorry lost my train of thought um, the nitric oxide you know that they release actually helps to um, clear the vessels. So it's something that uh, Dr. Esselstyn recommends, especially for his heart disease patients, is to eat as much of those foods as you possibly can. To improve your blood flow as well That's so right. very important yeah the night that i learned that from him as well you know the nitric oxide dilates the arteries helps the blood flow it's just super good for you so yeah. i always ask this question you know every plate i have of food i go how can i add more greens to this <laughs> it's like my my question that just keeps going around in my head how can i add more greens to this it's super good i love them so it's interesting, you know, we all eat the same way and health, like you look amazingly healthy and well. Thank you. Your energy and what's been the benefits to you eating this way personally? Because you didn't have an illness, but did you notice a difference? I notice a difference when I get out of um, my normal way of eating, which happens, you know, when I, when I travel because, uh, I, of course, I live in Europe and I've got the, most of the rest of my family are in Australia, but my sister lives in America. So we do a lot of we do a lot of international trips, and and that's that's when I notice the difference. Is when I get out of my routine, I get out of my rhythm. I I end up having to compromise on things a little bit when you travel because you you need to eat, yeah. and so you'll eat a little bit of oil and you'll eat some saltier things and you'll eat some more processed things, and it kind of wreaks havoc on my body a little bit. And that's when I notice. That's when I say, oh, okay, well, you know, obviously the way that I'm eating normally is making me feel really fantastic. And that's how I'm used to feeling when I when I travel and 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 things uh, you know don't don't go quite as healthily as they normally do. I'll have you know some digestive issues. My skin will will get worse. I'll feel a little more tired. I'll feel a little more lethargic. You know, um, and then when I get back home and get back into my routine and get back into my kitchen. It goes back to that. That's yeah. so, so interesting. You know, here you are. Oh, the norm is just feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know. Getting up at four in the morning makes you tired. Makes you tired. Sorry? I so getting up at four in the morning makes you tired. But, you know, if you can do that consistently for for a long time, then that's that's probably a yeah. testament to yeah, definitely. the health that you're in. Yeah, definitely. So anyone wanting to eat this way, what are your top three tips to help you getting started? Uh -huh. Top three tips is planning. Yep. Planning, planning. <laughs> no, but I will say planning, planning number one, definitely don't drive yourself crazy with the research, but set yourself up for success. So uh, make a menu plan, even if it's something very basic like a collection of legumes and grains and vegetables. Do your shopping you know, make yourself a shopping list, plan for it, shop for it, have it in your house, don't have junk in your house because anything that's in your house is in your mouth, as Chef AJ says. Yes. Um, so, pl yeah, planning for me is the number one key to success, whether that's when you're at home or when you're going out, you know, bring food with you, call ahead, plan ahead. Um, set up your environment for success and that just that's a continuation of the first point but um you know have things ready have things pre-cooked have meals in the freezer have cooked grains in the fridge have frozen vegetables on hand don't keep 
things that you know are detrimental to your health in your cupboard because, you know, you'll inevitably end up, yeah, they'll call, they'll call to you from, from your pantry at night. And, <laughs> and so you want to create an environment um, that you're going to be able to flourish in and be yeah. the most successful in. And number three is, is get support. So join an online community, you know, follow a program like Adam's, get along to some cooking glasses, join the uh, Plant Pure pod. I think there is one in almost every major city in Australia now um, so that you feel connected to people on some level, that you feel um, more uh, confident in what you're doing and that what you're doing is the right thing. Totally. Great tips, you know. It's all in the planning and the preparation and, having the food in the house and, you know, getting a community around you to support. You do those things, you're going to be well on your way to starting to put this food into your mouth. And yeah. when you put it in your mouth, it all changes. It all changes. That's exactly right. right. Man, thank you so much for taking the time and having thank a Thank you for having me. No, it's my pleasure. And um, anyone wants to do this really well, it, you know, Emma's book is a great resource, so grab it. <laughs> you know, five bucks a day, you can do this, like, it's so easy to do. And I want to thank you for actually creating that book because it's going to be a great resource for people for, you know, even it's a legacy, you know, even after you're a <laughs> It's going to be around. <laughs> Good to know. Do people go and find you to get in contact with you if you want them? You can head to plantplate.com. That's the website. And my email address and contact details are all available on there. You can find me on Facebook. If you search for Plant Plate as well, that'll come up. Uh, it's Plant Plate on Instagram where I share a lot more day-to-day -day stuff, you know, what I'm cooking and what we're eating for the week. Um, and in the Whole Food Plant-Based Aussies group, uh, if you want to join that on Facebook, I'm an administrator there, and so you can always ask questions and get a lot of great answers from a lot of great people. Yeah, that's super good. Definitely. And, yeah, your website's got some great articles on there as well, so if people want, you know, to delve into, delve into a bit more of the science and things, you've got some great articles on that, which we featured in our magazine, some of your articles. Yes, cool. thank you. Yeah, it's not just, it's not just recipes. I tried to... To put together a lot of a lot more practical things for people, people with families, people people on a budget. Yep, and kids so. and things like that, which is awesome. Yep, very Excellent. important. Excellent, Excellent, Emma. I'm so glad that we finally met, and after like Me ten too. years of knowing each other, yeah. that we actually get to talk <laughs> face to face. So it's been wonderful. Yeah, we'll more often. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks again, and we'll catch up soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure.